And welcome to Tavern Talks. This is the show where we talk about D&D, hang out with all of our wonderful friends, and of course drink beer. So, uh, tonight is a little bit different. Normally my co-host, who is now Matt, so our, our old co-host Austin had to step away due to some family things, and we are going to hopefully have him back here sometime in the near future. But until then, Matt had to jump in, and then Matt had an emergency... So we have a co-host for the co-host, as you could say, and he's uh, he's going to join us for this specific uh, moment because of what we're talking about tonight. So it's going to be a little different than what we're used to. Normally, we only talk D and D, and normally there's a there's a theme, but tonight we're going to talk about an organization, a charity, and give a little bit of love back to. Uh... Uh, uh, uh. <laughs> oh, look at that. He, he's got the whole force trick going on over there. See, I am drinking yeah. very dark uh, coffee ale from a local brewery around here. It's called the Coffee House. And uh, Oh, I didn't mean to interrupt your intro. I'm so sorry. <laughs> You're good, man. No worries. Uh, so I'm This is also a local brew. Wonderful people here. So to my let that way because i can never do this on camera one day i will learn this but it'll be years and years down the road mm -hmm. uh to my side here is uh the wonderful bipolar dm uh who is our main guest tonight and is the lead on dungeons and dog techs yeah i'm founder and and lead founder. guy awesome yeah. yeah so in dungeons we'll have a little bit of an explanation here in a short bit mm -hmm. of what that is and how to get involved that kind of thing and then below me and i can do below because it works better uh i have dm Janie, who i your favorite recently. dungeon master yes and he is a blast to hang out with uh if you have not been out on instagram or tiktok or twitter and you have not seen what the role of the day is uh DM Janie is the master of the role of the day. You've done what? You said a hundred plus. Of uh, things? yeah, it's over a hundred now. Um, wow. since since August. Hey, look at that! Heroes of Evermore says my wife is close friends with Latitude Thirty Three owners' wife. He, oh, that bro! Craziness. And you know what? Heroes and I live really close, so I'm about to get drunk. <laughs> <laughs> So, That's awesome. and then I will be out in uh, Colorado, out in that, that, that Colorado area here in the next couple of weeks. So, I know I'll be, I don't know exactly where Latitude 33 is, but. It's in SoCal. Ah, yeah, I won't be that far off. <laughs> <laughs> the, uh, the, uh, the other 33. Yes. Uh, we've got to roll some dice together soon. Yes. We got to show, we got to show GM Janie how to roll some dice on the last game board. Because that mm. thing is fun. And I was talking to these guys off off camera, so we are gonna be uh, we are personally um, promoting Last Game Board starting this year. Um, so if you need if you want Last Game Board, and if you've never heard of Last Game Board, it is a digital display that allows you to play all your games on the actual game board, and you can put your tokens on there, and it registers, and it's so freaking cool. And if you use our wonderful code, Tabletop Misfit, it's all one word, you get 50 bucks off or 10% off of a six-month subscription. So that's pretty pretty awesome. Uh, you can't beat that. That's a that's a freaking deal right there. Right? So, And not to mention it also helps our stream. So a little bit of that. That's, that's the most to, important part to boost right there. The stream. Mm -hmm. um, and Show some course, love to your boy. If you haven't already and you want to give us some support, make sure you hit the follow button. And uh, if you can spare a couple bucks to, to help us keep this thing running, uh, we've been running a year, but, you know, it's all out of our own charity at the moment. We'd love to have some help. Uh, make sure that you can, if you can, give us that subscribe and that helps us out a ton. Uh, but yeah, tonight, let's get on to the main event, which is Tavern Talks 32 featuring the Bipolar DM and... Dungeons and Dog Tag. So, Jason, take yeah. it away. Yes, Dungeons and Dog Tags is a mission I started back in GaryCon 13. 
what was happening was I was doing a dig. I was a virtual. It was all virtual. I was DMing about 12 hours worth of games. And at the end of that, I came to the conclusion of why couldn't I be doing this for our soldiers and in Marines and airmen and a lot who are overseas, you know, at the time Afghanistan was still going on. Yep. And so that was where I was born. And from there, we've, uh, you know, since we've had the withdrawal, we've expanded our mission to include veterans as well. And what we do as our mission is to provide Dungeons and Dragons to our uh, veterans in active duty uh, as a way of uh, supporting our game, our warfighter community through gaming. And that is the essence of what we do is we provide games, uh, role playing games for our veterans. Awesome. So. This hits home. This mm. hits home so much for me. And then funny enough, that is where the dream of Tabletop Misfits came from is through a deployment that I was downrange with a bunch of guys from all over the world. And uh, we, I'm, I'm, I'm getting teary. Oh my God, I'm getting teary eyed. <laughs> it's, uh, this is, yeah, this hits home for me really, really deeply. Uh, I got the opportunity to play with not just uh, American soldiers, airmen, mm -hmm. Marines, but we also were playing with the Australians. We were playing with Dutch. Mm -hmm. We were playing with Canadians. And it's so cool to know that like this one platform can bring them all together. So yeah. we, and I've made amazing friends that I probably would never have made without the, uh, the wonders of Dungeons and Dragons. And yeah. Uh, yeah, this is, and this is legitimately the start of what Tabletop Misfits became mm -hmm. uh, when I, when I launched it and I say, and when I came to the, and we talked to my partners and all that, and three of us were at the time, two of us were active duty one of us was getting out and the other ones were, were friends of ours, but yeah, no, it was very much in the back of our minds for the, the, the start of this. So. Yeah. And we have, uh, we have soldiers from uh, our, from our Canadian brothers and sisters and also from across the pond uh, from the uh, British military too playing yep. with us. Actually, uh, while I was in the desert, we were flying with the British. So that was, that was what we were doing. So it's a lot of fun. Yeah, uh, they were they were piloting our. They were actually they were liaisoning to us, so they were using our planes. But yeah, no, they were. Mm -hmm. It was it was a lot of fun. Um, yeah, and then Janie down here is a. He's a marine. Surprise! That's right, DM Jengi, your favorite dungeon master, was also a uh, marine for four years. So you, you know, Semper Fi, Ura, all that cool mm -hmm. stuff. You'll you know, I for all the airmen and and and. Uh, soldiers and everything like that. You don't need to be jealous, okay? You know, I know you wanted to be a Marine, but I still love you. All my, all, all my brothers in uniform, all my brothers and sisters in uniform, I still love you all. But if you, if you were a Marine, you got a special place in my heart. Um, so, you know, just, just thank you to all, 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 everybody, you know, all, all active duty, all the veterans out there, everybody who served in the military. And I just mm -hmm. want to say how happy I am to be with like, these, these beautiful gentlemen. I don't know what it is, um, but it, these bald heads right here, they're so sexy. I mean, if you guys, I don't know if they coordinated this. I'm starting to thin out a little on top. I'm not there yet, but uh, you know what? I just, I, yeah, this is, what a cool time. What a cool time. I yep. get lucky this moment right now because uh, with the whole uh, pandemic thing going on, I only have to go actually in uniform every once in a while. So that's where this whole thing, otherwise I'm active. I'm full on active duty. So, oh, okay. Yeah, I was going to say, well, you know, they got some lax standards in the Air Force. It's the Air Force. Yeah. Yeah. They got yeah, some lax yeah, standards the in the Air Force. Air Force. Yeah. yeah. But, uh, yeah, no, tomorrow is actually my day in the office. So I've got to go out here and <laughs> <gonna> clean up. <laughs> it all goes away and then it'll grow back before Sunday for our next stream. And that's kind of usually how it, how it works. That's awesome. Uh, yeah. but yeah, I know. Um, that is absolutely crazy because we had the thought process as misfits of like, can we start a charity organization that works with and does that stuff and gets those books downrange? Um, yeah, and that's our that's our phase two. So right now we got two phases. Phase one is the uh, online games, and that's where we're right. what we're doing right now. Phase two, which we're shooting for this summer, is actually starting games with MWR and uh, uh and with the navy and everything like that on military bases and trying to actually start in-person games on the military bases That's and awesome. so our uh we're uh, our aim box yeah of, uh, i have a box of 
Pathfinder like cardboard minis that were sitting at the USO for five years and nobody knew what to use them for. And we used them the entire time we were deployed. And she was like, do you just want to throw this in your bag? And I was like, <laughs> I was like yeah. <laughs> 300 cardboard minis? Heck yeah, I'll take these home. Those uh, things are great too. Years. I have those. Yeah, yeah. but uh, no, that's, that's awesome. And anything yeah. we can do kind of to help you guys, let us know because... Like I said, from the bottom of my heart, that is a that it, you're hitting you're hitting home real real easy with that. Mm -hmm. um, now that's stuff serious because I mean, look, you got a lot of times. I mean, you have so much downtime more often than not. You have so mm -hmm. much downtime, and when when you're on the field, or especially when you're deployed, and you're not around your friends, you're not around your family. You're around your friends, you know what I mean, in the military, but you know you're not around your family. You know your loved ones back home. That can that can take a toll. Doesn't matter if it's if it's mm -hmm. six months you know, a year, you know, three months, whatever, you know, shit, I was gone for a week, you know, a couple weeks for training. I was like, I want to go home. I miss my wife. You know what I mean? It's like, <laughs> it's, you know, so yeah. be, being able to have those mm -hmm. kind of like those, those, you know, cool things to just take you out of, out of your thoughts, really take yeah. you, take you to another place. That mm -hmm. is what's amazing about, about role playing in D and D is that you can be anywhere, be anybody and then go somewhere else and be somebody else and, Agreed. and you know, have that escapism, but in a really mm -hmm. communal way, it's not just reading a book by yourself you're connecting with people. Yes. Yeah. That's what's amazing. So kudos. Yeah. And, um, and, so and the uh, environment of uh, Dungeons and Dragons is so great because it allows us to also practice coping skills and, uh, and conflict resolution, things, conflict resolution, all kinds of stuff that we need to do, especially in our transition into the civilian world. Oh yeah. And have a safe space for us to be able to do that and, fuck it up, you know, make mistakes, oh, yeah. you know, and not have any real world consequences. No, I Absolutely. completely agree. Um, hey, so real quick, since we've got a few people sitting in chat right now and everybody seems to be listening. So there's this nice little monster over here with a question mark on it. So make sure you guys are thinking about what that might be and start tossing those comments down in the comment list. Uh, mm -hmm. And then at about 930, uh, we'll pop that out there and we'll show you what that thing is because it's pretty, mm -hmm. pretty wicked. Yeah. That's what I'm looking for. Right, cool. But yeah, so this is uh this is your show, right? This is Saturdays at seven PM Eastern Standard Time and this is yep. kind of your your talk show and um you talk about a lot of this on there as well, correct? Yeah, we cover all kinds of topics. I mean, not just Dungeons and Dragons, but also uh, mental health and indie writing as well, because uh, all three of them just intersect in my life. Uh, the mental health and my recovery from bipolar uh, with using uh, Dungeons and Dragons. Um, uh, Gary Kahn's Facebook site, they let us do it. Luke Gygax actually approved it. And uh, from there, we just blew up. I mean, and you know, faster than, than we were, it kind of caught us flat footed <laughs> and, uh, because we weren't expecting just like all of a sudden just floods of guys, guys and ladies coming in wanting to play. And it took us a little bit to catch up. I mean, we had the discord server set up and everything like that, but we didn't have all the game, uh, dungeon masters in yet, but now we got games running seven days a week. Uh, we're trying now to set up to do multiple games during the day. Uh, so uh, we have a lot of opportunities for volunteer work. If you're a dungeon master and want to uh, throw in and uh, start a game up at any time you want to. And of course, we're always looking for players because uh, we got slots to fill and uh, missions to uh, to go on and dragons to slay. Yeah, no, there's always dragons to slay. There's never enough dragons to slay. <laughs> yeah, I want to put something in the chat right now because you just said flat footed, and I, I'm hoping somebody can name that edition because that that is, that is something you don't hear a lot oh, of talk yeah. about nowadays edition. around the table. Yeah, you know what I'm saying? You don't hear a lot of people say flat footed anymore, mm -hmm. which was uh, which is good. Oh no, we're cutting out. That's not good. Is it, is it just uh, me that's cutting out? Hey, who said 3.5? But that's cool. Hey, man. Well, yep. look, I got a lot of respect for, for Jason over here for, for putting that together because, again, you know, there, there's not – I think – I don't think there's enough work being done for veterans mm -hmm. um, in terms of, like you said, transitioning, in terms of the after support, right? Everybody's like, oh, support the troops, support the troops, support the troops, which is great. You know what I mean? Don't get me wrong. That's great. 
but my sense and a lot of veterans that I work with, and I, I, I work with a lot of, um, uh, do a lot of homeless advocacy, advocacy mm-hmm. and I live right outside of Camp Pendleton. So I work with a lot of, I, I have worked with a lot of veterans. We have one of the largest veteran populations in the nation yeah. right outside of Camp Pendleton. And, um, you know, working with, working with veterans and being in that, that space, you see that there are, there's a plethora of resources, but one, they're, they're, they're really lacking in, in, I would say connectivity where, you know, you can, you mm-hmm. can connect to these resources. And then there's also a lack of like, it's very, it's very like, and that's, that's the problem with a lot of things, but it's very siloed. You know what I mean? Where you, you, you can't connect with other things you know, from that, there's not a branching off point. It's just like, all right, come here and get your meal voucher, come here and get, you know, and it's, yeah. but you don't connect with other people. And I think that the fact that you've, you've created a support system that not only is, is engaging because it's a game, not only is it, like you said, it develops great skills, coping mechanism, you know, conflict resolution and all that stuff. Not only does it help a very vulnerable population that oftentimes we get, you know, that gets overlooked because we think like, oh, they're good. They're veterans. There's so many things out there, but there's really not when it comes to mental health and the recognition mm-hmm. of the mental health issues that veterans have to face. Whether you were deployed or not, whether you saw combat, whether you lost somebody or not, does not mean that you don't suffer from negative mental health consequences from some aspect of being in the military. Because there, there is, I would say for, for the most part, there is no easy thing about being in the military. Mm-hmm. You, walk away, I, you walk away having sacrificed some parts and gained others. You know what I mean? Yeah. And some, some of those things you know, are great. And you walk away a lot of times with a, with, you know, your head held a little higher, maybe a little more pride, a little more, you know, uh, 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 feeling like you can take on, you know, challenges because you've been trained for those things. Right. But at the same time, you also leave behind a connection with the community. You also leave behind, uh, that reassurance of, I know what I'm going to do every day, or I know where I belong, or mm-hmm. let's say you had a negative experience in the military, because again, it's not easy being in the military one, being away from friends, uh, uh, being, being a, in the Marine Corps. I'm not going to lie. Look, let's be real. Let's be 100% real right now. The military, at least I'm not going to speak about the military in general. My experience in the Marine Corps, and I served from 2010 to 2014. Mm-hmm. My experience in the Marine Corps was, it was a great experience. I love being a Marine, but it was a very toxic environment. And that's mm-hmm. not something I say lightly. I don't, I don't throw the word toxic around because I don't, I don't like how people use that word. It's so overused nowadays. Oh, that's so toxic. No, you just don't like it. You know what I'm saying? It's not, yeah. it's not you just don't like it. You know what I'm yeah. saying? It's going to hurt your feelings. But the Marine Corps, especially from what I understand, I was never anything else. Um, but for Mar- the Marine Corps is a very toxic environment. And it was almost co- part of the culture. It wasn't like, it, w- it was like, we are toxic on purpose. We know we're toxic and we're, we're being toxic on purpose because if we're mean to you and we degrade you and then we t- treat you like shit, you'll have this aggression and you'll have this like energy or this, this, this rage mm-hmm. basically that they want you to have, they want you to be, because what do you get told? Like I said, in the Marine Corps, I, I'm speaking generally, but I'm speaking from Marine experience. You know, you're told you're a killer. You're a killer. Find mm-hmm. the enemy, destroy it. Yeah, ah, go, go, go. And you're always on the, yeah, the what fucking makes edge the, of. Yeah. What makes the grass grow? <laughs> yeah, exactly. You know what I'm saying? Like you're always on the fucking, the edge of, 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 of this intensity and this, this, ah, all the time. And, and you got to fucking kill, kill, kill. And, and fuck you, bitch. You know what I mean? Like all you know what I mean? It's like, yeah. shut the fuck up or get back to, you know what I mean? And you get treated like shit if you're on the lower ranks and it's not, you know, whatever it is, but it's, it's not a, it's not like a, a happy, like, oh, hugs and fucking, oh, I get treated so nice and I'm appreciated and, you know, I'm, I'm mm-hmm. accepted and no, it's not, you know what I mean? And so even if you have a great experience, like I did, you come out, you know what I mean? Whatever. You're going to be a little fucked up from going through mm-hmm. some, like just, a, just years of being screamed at years of being in a toxic culture because you get in, in you get in great uh like in in what is it um indoctrinated indoctrinated yeah. into that yep. into that and it takes it took me a long time to break the, a lot of toxic habits i had and that was part of the mental health process that i had to go through mm-hmm. because i had so much anger so much so much not i could i i would my temper would flare up in an instant mm-hmm. right and it would just be like I'm ready to attack. I'm ready to hurt somebody. I'm ready to, to, to break things, destroy things. Ah, you know, I'm a fucking Marine. Ah! You know, I'm kick doors in and just kill a motherfucker. You know what I mean? Like, mm-hmm. that's how I had this, 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 because that's what I was trained, you know, to feel for, right. for years, right? And so when you get out and then you're not, you're in this culture and you're like, 
uh, 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 uh. And people are like, why you, why you drink so much? Like, why are you so angry? Whatever. Well, because I was supposed to. I, I was made to be this way. Yeah. So people, if I wasn't this way, I was called a pussy. I was put down. I was made fun of for not being hard enough, for not being tough enough. You know mm-hmm. what I mean? And so, again, I'm going on a tangent. I'm sorry. I'm going on a tangent. I, I, no, I just yeah. want to say, your work is awesome. And a yeah. lot of times, we don't see that side of things. Because like It's right. It's like, oh, you you pain. didn't get blown up? How could you not have mental health issues? You know what I'm saying? Like, Yeah. yeah. I was a combat medic and during peacetime in the late 90s. And... Uh, but I was in Washington, D.C. too, murder capital of the United States. So, yeah, work in ER. See, that same so. thing. I got friends in ER. They're like, dude, the shit I see on a day to day, I go home and I weep sometimes. Mm-hmm. Fucking weep. grown men who got out of the military and, and now serve, you know, or now, now in, in nursing. I'm like, dude, I weep from. And it's just like people, you can have mental health, you could have mental health impacts, negative mental health impacts mm-hmm. from almost, I don't want to say from almost anything, but in almost any field. There, there, there is that. And a lot of times, again, it's not recognized because it's like, oh, you didn't get blown up or somebody didn't yeah. die or whatever. If it's not like this crazy thing that happened all at once, how could it have affected you? Right. Yeah. And that's what I ran into myself in the military uh, during the 90s. It was the uh, when I was uh, during my first uh, tour of duty, I developed bipolar and they were basically like, you're broken. We can't fucking do anything with you. Get the fuck out. Yeah, that's they screwed thing. me over on retirement and and all that and my benefits just because at the time uh, mental health was treated. I mean, it's better now from what I hear, but back it's, then it, 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 it was pretty. It was anything better. you didn't go to psych. That was a thing. That was a career. That was a career, career ender right there. It's you still don't like go that. to psych. Yeah, yeah. people. Just, Please, it's still please, like that. please, if yeah. you hear this later on down the road and yeah. you are having issues with your mental health, there is such a stigma behind that, though. That, mm-hmm. And I've talked to the, like I said, I've been to mental health and I've done my my requirements on that. I've, I've served 10 years now and I didn't get kicked out for my mental health issues. Trust me, that's not going to happen. Mm-hmm. Um but the problem is, is that stigma, that buildup that people mm-hmm. have told you, and that's going to ruin your career, that's going to ruin you from promotion, that's going to do all this. Mm-hmm. It doesn't partially because of HIPAA. So they can't go back and tell your command this. And people need to realize that. Mm-hmm. All you have to do is tell your command, you are having a medical appointment. Remember this kind of stuff. This is, oh my God, no, I'm going, I'm, I'm getting hot. Yeah. Because, this is something that is so important to many people in the military that they need to realize this kind of stuff. Going to those places is not going to kill your career. It's not going to it's not going to detriment your career. And if it does, there are legal actions that can be processed. And yeah. the, it the military is not going to fool that fool at that because they're going to lose 100% of the time. And you need to make sure you're taking care of yourself both physically and mentally in the military, outside the military, in any sort of profession. I do. Com- I work at computers all day long, and some of the stuff I've seen because I've worked with intelligence agencies, I've worked with law enforcement, I've worked mm-hmm. overseas, and I'm not supposed to be those guys that are actually dealing with the crap. But because of what I do, I have to see it. It can still affect you. So don't think just because you're not shooting a gun or you're not out there blowing people up that it's not getting in your head because it does. And you guys ever see huge. that? Did you guys ever see that interview? Um, that it was like an anonymous interview of a Facebook uh, moderator. They, I think it was like Vox or one one of those reporting right. channels uh, or journalism channels. They um they did it an interview with somebody that was a, a moderator for Facebook, and they were like the stuff that I see. You know, because they, they were talking about the mental health and they're talking about how there's not there wasn't resources for them. Um, and they were told, you know, to just go back to work or ignore it or whatever. And, you know, cause like I said, anywhere, any, any mm-hmm. field you work in potentially, you can get exposed to things that have a negative health, uh, impact on your mental health. And you got to talk to somebody about that. If you keep yeah. that to yourself, we're not designed as human beings to, to, to bottle up things that like, that are damaging to our mental health because it literally, you have, uh, uh, psychosomatic symptoms. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? You literally can start having bad health. You literally, you know, your body starts reacting in, in the way that you're feeling 
because you're keeping it instead of letting it out. You know, I mean, it's like a poison. It's like a toxin. You gotta, you gotta go get it treated. You know, even if it's, even if it's to friends, not, you know, not everybody feels like they can talk to their friends, but if you have veteran friends or friends that work in the same field as you, that, you know, just talk to them. Cause I bet you they're feeling the same thing you're feeling. You know, just be like, Hey man, like this, this has been hard. Like, how do you, how do you feel about this? Yeah. So I want to take this and I want to kind of move the direction. So we've talked about mental health. We've talked about the organization. We're going to go over our monster of the week. And then we're going to go into the idea of how do you personally, or how do you make sure that these games are helping the airmen? How are they making sure yeah. these games are helping the Marines? So first off, um, we've got Quagoth out there. Does anybody else have any other guesses? Or does everybody think it's that? When I was going with werewolf, something oh, where, because the way it's kind of like leaned over and it's got the extended limbs, my first thought was where or something. I mean, it's a good guess. And if if this is all we've got, then um, Jason, you can tell him. Is he right? Yes, he's right. He's right. Whoa. You're absolutely right. Way off. Hey, Way off. Welcome. One shot wonders. Thank yeah. You for the follow. Yeah. One shot wonders. The Quagoth. What's up? Let me. Uh, Bring him up there. So this is. I've never Quagoth. heard of a Quagoth. They uh, work with the Illithid. They're uh, like, yeah, they're like the guardians, uh, the hounds oh, for Illithid, the mind flayers. Yeah. So there's a couple of things. I went and I researched these things because that thing I, looks I, bad. I've really enjoyed. Yeah. Uh, this year we started the monster of the week, and it not only is nice because then we get to kind of people start guessing and having fun with it, but at the same time I sit back and I actually go in as a GM and I'm looking at this thing and going. How can I throw this at my players? What would it feel like? And I start learning a little bit about it. So some things I found out about the Quagoth this last couple of days is they're slaves. 90% of them are slaves to the, to the drow. So, um, and if they don't, they break away and they start their own communes and stuff like that. Uh, um, I actually threw about six of these suckers at a party once, and uh, they pretty much ran for their lives. This was a very early campaign that I had been running. Uh, one of our players from our show is actually a part of it. But, um, yeah, they, they, they feared their absolute lives because these things started kind of giving that, that weird, like, slashing, crawling on walls, ripping up and down ceilings, dropping down on <laughs> things. Um, yeah. And they're pack animals, so they're like they're like wolves. They're, they're pack creatures, mm -hmm. and most of them do not actually have any sort of spells. But their immune or their their immunities are poison, so they're hard to take down mm -hmm. uh, by just natural natural reasons. Uh, there are things called thonauts, though, that are a version of the quagoth. Uh, quagoth, I, I, I might be. All right, we need the official ruling. Yeah. Five bowler DM. What it says Quagoth. Quagoth. Okay. So the yeah. Quagoth um Shh. the Quagoth Thonauts is the magical versions of these things, and mm -hmm. there are very few of them. Um and they actually can absorb psychonic psionic energy, so they can mess with, you know things like mind flayers that come at them are actually gonna get strengthen them more rather than less. Mm -hmm. And uh yeah, no, I, I really had fun um, researching these again. Uh, the other thing yeah. is they've got this almost Hulk-like demeanor to them. As they get, if they get hurt more, they get stronger. And mm -hmm. uh, that's never a good thing. The, uh, <laughs> the six intelligence, yeah, you know, they're very. Um, so if you haven't, I'm gonna do my my one pitch of the week because I pitch it every week because it's an amazing book. And if you don't have it and you don't you want to learn how to run monsters properly, this is a wonderful book to do so with. And I'm going to see if I can put it to my chest to see if you can see it. It is The Monsters Know What They're Doing. If you haven't read this book, you need to read it because it's – yeah, there we go. Yep. Every GM should have it on their desk. <laughs> yep. playing. All right. I'm getting On one. my desk. Yep. That is a great book based on a podcast. Yes. And uh, I I've heard much one, about it. But, there's, um, much, there's much ado going on about it. Everybody raves. Yes. Uh, so yeah. what it does is it takes all these stats and all these crazy uh, things that you see in mathematics – and it breaks it down to understanding it. So yeah, because strategy. the creature is high strength, high con, he's going to be up close and personal. He's not going to hide. He's not going to be fearful. Um, his wisdom and intelligence are very low. His wisdom's somewhat good, so he's going to be very natural. He's not going to 
he's not going to think it's going to be more fight or flight type mentality and 90 percent of it because of its uh wounded fury is always going to be fight so these things are never going to back down they're going to go for blood they're going to kill whatever they have seen and then they're going to turn on the next thing and kill it too without even thinking twice um and those are just intense moments that you have to that that these creatures be useful useful for um, and you said they're pet they're, or sorry by both dm you said they were used to guard illithids the illithids have used them as guardians as well because of their psychic uh their psychic abilities and resistances they they don't go insane like some of the other creatures yes. that are around them that they dominate mm -hmm. um it, mm -hmm. that's the kind of a problem they have oh yeah that's kind of the problem they have with slaves is that a lot of them go insane because of the mind control and these are one of the few creatures that resist to that are resistant to that so they make very good um re, uh, guardians for them whenever yes. they're able to tame them i think that's an amazing like little piece of like kind of lore kind of kind of flavor for them you know what i mean because like oh, yeah. if you run into them hey there might be an illithid right around the corner you know what i mean like oh, 100%. or a drow yeah it could or be a fucking one. drow yeah I saw yeah, a picture of an illithid the other day because I, I grew up reading R.A. Salvatore. So anything Underdark for me, maybe mm -hmm. not just anything Underdark, but you know what I mean? Especially Drow or Underdark related um, has a special place in my heart right next to the Marines. Um, <laughs> <laughs> and, and so like anytime I hear something like, ooh, Underdark, illithids especially, I had this image in my head of illithids, right? And I saw illithids, you know, uh, later on. And then I never really had an appreciation for illithids until I saw a picture it was an, and you guys have probably seen it. It's been, it's come around recently, but it was, it's an illithid that is, he, he's got it like, you know, bare, bare topped illithid. He's, he's, uh, crouched over somebody, um, like a victim, and he's like looking up with a really feral look. In, um, but it's you basically. seen the new Baldur's Gate 3 promo? I have you it. Haven't? Oh my God. No, just after this, go watch that and you'll see what illithid really looks like and you'll be scared to death. These things it, are. That's crazy. what I'm saying. Like, they, they made him look so fucking savage. And I, when I, when you read the R.A. Salvatore books, they're like, oh, illithids. Like, oh, I'm, I'm, you know, like this, this fucking intellectual, like, sure, I'll, I'll suck his brains out, but I'm going to do it with class. That's how I kind of <laughs> read the description of illithids. Like these kind of beings, they had their hand clasped together. Mm, yeah. Kind of to that <laughs> yeah. point though, because they're very, like, very they don't get their hands the dirty. Mind. Right, yeah, right, right. They get their hands dirty. They don't like... Um, they're very like scientific as well. So uh, illicits are when built they, But when they get own... to sucking, when they get to their mind sucking, bro, the brain juice yeah. flowing, yeah. that's what I'm saying. Like I never, I never saw the primal aspect of yeah. the illithid. I, yeah. and, and, and like it's me, giving yeah. me such a greater appreciation for them. And right. now with the combination of the Quagoth, you know what I'm saying? I feel like, like shit, dude. I imagine like illithid 3D is coming down the hallway. Illithid's just sitting in the back. He's just watching you, right? He, yeah. He's at the party. He just looks and just why these things are coming from the ceiling like the, like an aliens movie. You know, freaking calling yeah. all down yeah. the passway like shit. Yeah, no, yeah. It'd, ah. be a, it'd be a terror. It would be. A I would run like and that party too. If you yep. want to throw anything more with the illicits and have some more fun, so actual slaves of the illicits are called Kuatoa, and they've actually went insane because of how long they've been controlled mm -hmm. by the illicits. And uh, those are some fun. Uh, yeah, and yeah. a nice little fact about the Kuatoas is they actually like capturing the uncaptured uh, ones, the, the ones that are non-slaves, because their brains taste sweeter mm. uh, to, to them. So their Kuatoas are also a food source for the uh, illithid. Uh, for the illithid as yeah. well. Do you want to know another? Wow. So this is a crazy fact about the <laughs> Kuatoa that I found out when I was running my first campaign. And I did it as a way to play with my players after I decided that I was going to play with these things is they will worship the biggest thing in the area mm -hmm. so my so everything was being collected for this massive rocking chair when they found it they found out that's all it was was a rocking chair but they were worshiping the rocking chair because it was the biggest thing in their their cave and they were running out to this town nearby and taking all the small things like shovels pots you know random odds and ends and then they had this giant horde hanging around the rocking chair <coughs> And then there was, of course, the the Kuikoa priestess who was sitting on the rocking chair, and she was like their uh, their their signet to connect to the rocking chair, and that that's, that's what they thought was their god was the rocking chair. It was great. That's so yeah. Great. The lore of Dungeons and Dragons is so rich, especially when you're looking at close to fifty years of oh god, yeah, storytelling. So 
with with these different on races. That note, with the 50 year yeah. thing, so they just yeah. released that sixth edition will not come out until 2024 when they released the fifth year edition. So mm-hmm. that that's when they're doing it. It's well, so, they said the next evolution. The next evolution. I don't know. Yes. Yeah. So Whether it's going to be a 5.5 5 5 or six. How many yeah. iterations? And so here's the thing. I love Dungeons and Dragons, but 3.5 has that special place in my heart right next to the Marines and R.A. Salvatore. And you loved having a thousand books that had little random things in every yes. book. And you couldn't. Yes. And I loved you, having 900 kind friends. of skills I could pull from. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. I want lore of the room, not just lore of the town, local oh lore. I want goodness, lore of this no. room. <laughs> I fucking love that. The Cheers, more. Heroes. Yeah. Hang out. The the nice more like here. little pluses or minuses I could add onto a role and make my DM as confused as <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> no, but uh, so let me ask you this. So with all the iterations of D and D, and do you guys obviously it's an evolve it's always an evolving game. It's it's like a mm-hmm. living game, right? It's a living document kind of thing. Yeah. But at what point is it not D and D anymore? Or is it always D and D and D and D is what D and D is at the time? Because then, can you compare fifth edition to AD and D, or OD and D? You can. You compare. You can. I mean, you can, but only as much as like it's it's it's, it's like oh, we got the playing. same. Yeah, yeah. So, at what point does it change so much? Like edition seventeen. You know what I mean? We got space walkers. Like okay, like it's not. D&D so surprisingly anymore, right? enough, the the core of D and D has kind of stayed similar. The mechanics have changed every edition. It's just kind of what you're seeing most of the time. And then later on, they're now getting to the point where they're starting to develop and bring back a lot of those types of places that they that they wrote about in second and third edition. And yeah, like Dragonlance. Like Dragonlance. Oh, yeah. the fourth special place in my heart. Dude, he's not yep. Oh my There's god. Rumor. The battle against the Dragon Queen. Oh! <laughs> the Dragonlance. Oh! So I yeah. have... Um, I have, a, I have a lot of pride for fifth edition that I was not expecting. Mm-hmm. Um, I re- I lived in second and third edition. I lived in 3.5. Nobody talks about fourth, even though personally, if you use fourth in very small doses in certain things, they did write on certain things. It's just not everything. And that was the problem that we ran into. That and they made it sound too much like a video game because they picked it in blocks, even though really you still play in blocks when you're on a grid paper, but it just sounded weird. And I couldn't, a lot of people couldn't wrap their hands around it. Uh, So I think really it's one of those things where you've either got to, you've either got to accept the fact that evolution is going. And the crazy difference about, I think, fifth edition compared to any edition before this is that fifth edition was the first edition where third party and small creators could throw stuff into the into the mix and mm-hmm. actually be big about it. It wasn't just I didn't hear about those guys before. I've never heard of these guys. No, no, no. You've got all these creators. You've got Patreons through the roof randomly of, mm-hmm. of custom monsters, custom armor. I mean, or custom items, custom magic, and then you've got big num- names that are growing just as large as some of the books in D D that have never yeah. that aren't actually D D. They are a supplement of them. Yeah. So it kind of it, it's a very weird connection. I think that it is the age of D D right now. Like if you guys if you guys have any doubt that D D is like the fucking thing right now. Oh god uh, yes. just go to the dollar store. You know what I'm saying? And they got yeah, D&D get dice. dice. Go to yeah. the go to Walmart and they got the, the monster manual, the dungeon master guide to the player's yeah. handbook in the book section now. Go to go to YouTube and and every other video is an ad for the new uh, Matt Mercer Critical Role car- animation. Yeah, you know what I'm saying? Machina. Like, yeah, yeah back 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 to Machina. Everything now, it's D and D is the fucking shit right now. Well, what you and, see, what you're seeing differently right now is is that all those people that played in the 60s and 70s, like 70s, big big time, were playing. They're now coming out and saying they played. So this is what you're getting. At. They run so the they getting, run the. Uh, production companies now yeah yeah well, truthfully i mean yeah. look at some of the yes, companies we're looking at um some of the big names so everybody knows who and, and i awesome guy met him at gen con absolutely amazing dude uh uh matthew lillard plays shaggy off of scooby-doo 
Oh he's yes, also yes. The, he's also the yeah. co-creator of Beetle and Grimm's, who does all of these massive, huge box sets additions to all sorts of different versions of D and D. So oh. him and five other guys got together, and they've been playing since the seventies, of course, when they were building these things at the beginning. But now they're all now they're all actors and making money and stuff like that. So they throw it. So there's two versions of D and D, and this is something that I've I've been kind of piecing my brain together. And how you get involved with that is depends on which version you want to really be connected with. So you've got D&D as a whole, which is this massive, massive circle right now. And everybody can get in. And then you've got what those actors are working in. It's this, this smaller circle. And that's the people who are throwing thousands and thousands of dollars at, you know, six foot by ten foot buildings or, or rooms from Dwarven Forge or you oh know, yeah yeah 6, building 000. sets to host D&D and, yeah and, and yeah an entire I, dungeon I set up both yeah. of those are amazing opportunities for mm-hmm. D&D I think both of those are amazing opportunities for players I got to play my first game in Dwarven Forge while I was at Gen Con and I was like this stuff is amazing um, I don't have that kind of money uh, yeah or space and, or space I, well, space yeah. I'm building. Space is yeah. space will happen uh, as we get bigger and bigger. That's kind sure. of the, the, the process. I need space. Yeah. Um, I mean, I literally threw. We, we've got a four bedroom house, and one is my office slash guest bedroom slash everything from D and D in here. Uh, oh, yeah. So there's that, and but like if I can get if I get any bigger, or if I start to grow in other ways in the, outside of D and D. Like the garage will be the next opportunity, so that will be mm-hmm. where I'll actually start building a studio and that kind of stuff like that. Um, let me go back to our uh, our actual thing here. There we go. Back to the dog tags. Uh, but yeah, no. Um, so uh, Shadow Lantern one ninety three. Just as just as a kind of bounce back to that, um, the Quagoth was the one you you were absolutely correct, and that was awesome that you guessed it right off the bat. We had one other guy guess it um, on Instagram, uh, so Sketchy Goblin sent me a message. Hey, is it a Quagoth? And I was like, yes, yes, it is. But Fuck yeah, people. Sketchy! So he's a he's a great artist. Um, he's sketchy doing Kobold, some, go check him out. Yep, he's doing some work for us, uh, and we're excited to see what he comes up with. So I'm, I'm really he did excited. the artwork on <clears throat> on. Um, God, what did I name that NPC? Yeah. The elven one, but the really colorful vest, the waistcoat oh. of wanting, um, the uh, the belt, or no, the on-in cumber band, and oh God, there's the one, the other one. He, oh, the uh, the um, the uh, the the backpack, which I cannot remember. I I can never remember the details of my own homebrew. That's so bad. Oh, I have such okay, ADHD. Man. I mean, everybody's yeah. got. Everybody's got detail. Everybody's got homebrew that's out through the roof, that kind of stuff. Yep. So, but he did some amazing it. artwork on them. I was like, dude, and he did it like like that. Like, like it, I can't promise he always does it, but within the day, he produced just some amazing artwork. Like, yeah, no, we uh, we actually had the same opportunity. So we had a guy named uh, Nat Twenty out of England. Um, he he took our entire ideas of all of our players for our stream, and in less than a week, had everybody created from. From I wish I wish I could freaking draw full like yeah. artwork everything and he's an absolute amazing artist he's out there on Instagram as well so definitely go check him out that's yeah. what I'm saying like look how many D and D creators there are now like artists dice making like dice making holy shit dice making is a it's not even a D and D thing dice making is its whole thing now like you don't even have to yeah, play D and D and you're just a dice, dice maker like, I have I yeah have dice um, oh I started making my own dice did I did I did I tell you dude. No, I just started I, making. I saw you started making them. Um, these, though, if you are a streamer or if you are a a or you have um, you're running games and you want to be a little quiet, I have silicone dice. These are the most amazing <gasps> things in the world. Wait, put it put it a little bit closer. Let me see. So okay, now silicone. Is it squishy or it's just soft? It, well, it's soft. It's not super squishy though. Like you right, can, right, right. But it's not. It's not clanky. No, but it's not like yeah. you know one of these, you know, oh! brass. <laughs> oh, hold up! No, 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 hold on. We're gonna have to. I gotta go get my big old chunk of roof from North Foundry. Yeah, uh, you got North my. Uh... Yeah, but like you can actually like push in on this, and kind of it has a little give. I got yeah. those. Uh, so Chessex. Um, 
I picked these up at Gen Con this year. In the MDG is the ones I picked these up, and these those are those are a lot of fun. So yeah, if you want to break your 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 tables? <laughs> yeah. Look, I'm going to compare this to a regular D20. Hold on, let me grab one. We got a little bit off topic. Damn. <laughs> This thing is this thing is solid. I can I read you, that. You can hear this. Hey, buddy, we just talked about you just a couple seconds ago because you were the sketchy. Second, you were the other person that guessed the uh, Quagoth. So we just so you have to check us out on the VOD later on and uh, hear the the shout out we gave for you, buddy. Yeah, we did. Um, so yeah, we uh, so we've talked about Dungeons and Dog Tags. We've talked about uh, oh yeah, no, these things are awesome too. Hold on, let me grab these. These are new. Uh, most people have never seen these before. You know who needs dice? Oh, dope. Is that, what is that? It's a D4 that doesn't hurt your foot. Hey! Wow. I like that. So it's rounded. Everything is <coughs> rounded. Nice. Um, yeah, so as part of uh, the GUI Cube, who is the company that uh, I write for and that we run our stream from or with, uh, they actually um, they do a Kickstarter, and part of their Kickstarter bonuses were a set of gooey dice which is the green dice that i use on our roll of the day and the one of the things that they do is they do those 4d or d4s that are uh not painful or less mm -hmm. painful i could rather they also do a d6 that has a little skull in the middle of it that's cool oh nice because they're the gelatinous cubes so i love that yeah clear any kind of clear die yeah. those are my favorite the translucent die yeah so we've got like i said but we do um we do a little bit of everything. Uh, well, I do a little bit of everything. Mostly uh, care package that dude some dice. Yes. Uh, he, we need to get Sketchy some dice. I don't know how we're going to get those to him, though, because of the fact that he's in, in like... He can't get them. He can't the get them. in the middle of Mexico somewhere. And, uh, he's in the middle like, of the jungle, remember? Yeah. We have to like <clears throat> drop ship those things from, you know... Uh, a plane, a drone or something. <laughs> yeah, there's a little parachute. We're going to have to have out. a SEAL team go and insert them into the freaking... <laughs> yeah. I'm telling you, man. Yeah. Uh, he's like, he's been rolling with the virtual dice, which are great. But yeah, yeah. I'm he's glad great. that I'm just glad that he's he he's he's rolling it all. You yeah. know what I mean? No, I agree. Uh, we actually had a guy. So I on Tuesdays now, every other Tuesday, I'm over at Last Game Boards on there. Whose role is it anyway? Which is a, um, it's an oh, improv. Shit. It's an improv show, mm. and we don't get our characters until we step on the night so Yo. we have 20 minutes we have literally like 10 minutes while we're role playing and learning reading our characters to understand all the stats and to understand our our abilities and uh we have a guy over there named rico rico rpg and he's a down in puerto rico and he legitimately all he does every single day is run D, &D which i was like bro that's awesome yeah uh, yeah that's his that's his full-time job which is pretty crazy uh yeah so that reminds any me tips, of prepper die any tips yeah. and tricks you guys have to maybe the really cool tricks you have is like hey how do you get a military member interested in playing D? &D? what would be your hmm. suggestions because i know we've got like personally mine was super easy i had a giant bag of die and like 12 uh character sheets and i sat in the mwr and I started rolling dice, and everybody's kind of coming up behind me and looking. And I was like, and I was like oh, you play? And they're like, oh, yeah. And within like 20 minutes, we had 12 players. So, you know, it was a. Yeah. But if you don't play, or you're curious to play, or you're nervous because you think somebody's going to make fun of you, how would you suggest maybe easing that process in or explaining to people in the military how what D&D &D is to make them feel a little less, you know, nerdy? I mean, that's the only way I could say this without making it sound like I'm just trying to find other words. I would say the first thing is having a welcoming environment, you know, one that's positive. So I think the biggest draw is, uh, especially for Dungeons and Dog Tags, is that we're playing with other military and no civilians so that we can be who we are as veterans and as active duty talk the way we normally do, which is, let's be honest. It's a little bit toxic, right? Yes, it is a lot, <laughs> lot honest. of, a um, lot of slamming between the branches and that's stuff. That's what I'm like saying that, though, because when you're in that environment, like that's what you become. 
that's how we, you know, that's how we talk. And a lot of civilians don't understand that, but having that environment though, does make it a lot. I, I got a lot of new players coming in too, who've never played or haven't played in years. And their ju- second edition is so easy to learn. All you have to you learn by playing. That's second the one thing edition? I love. That's what you're Not play? sorry, second. I'm fifth edition. Fifth oh, edition. I was like, I was like, I was like, sorry, I had I second like, edition on the brain. Uh, I had I like, yeah, I had AD and It's like you started from the, the beginning. Oh, D and D. Started from the first one and, and only like, like, three dice ever, to roll their uh, roll their stats. I don't ever <laughs> want Thacko to be a thing ever again. Uh, somebody actually yeah. mentioned that in the chat room today. It's like, do you miss Thacko? And I'm like, no, no. <laughs> I'd rather drill a hole in my head than go through that again. Yeah, um, I will say though. So, and I hate to say this because it's kind of similar to how I play with uh, younger people. Uh, if you're new to D and D kind of break mm-hmm. it down a little easier for people if you can mm-hmm. um take out some stuff you don't need six thousand abilities you don't mm-hmm. need all the feats and craziness um i taught seven-year-olds how to play D by giving them a weapon a name and three different die and that's it and i was like this is what we're rolling with the entire time and our wonderful mm-hmm. uh our wonderful player and in one of my games, as well as a, a close friend of mine, you'll see her pop in here every once in a while, Gummy Bear Wars. She came up with this system, and I was like, wow, this is the easiest thing I've ever done. And it makes so total sense. Hmm. Um, I would say the same thing, yeah. If you're if you're introducing somebody that, had, that hasn't played, because I've had this conversation with a lot of people, like, oh, you know, do you want to play? Because I'm trying to get back into in-person gaming. Well, at least I was before fucking Omicron or fucking Theta or Omega or whatever the fuck we're on now. Um, and so I was talking to people, I was like, Hey, do you want to play D and D? Well, I, I wasn't just like, Hey, you want to play D and D? Um, but I told him, I was like, Hey man, I, I do this role playing game. It's a lot of fun. You know, every conversation I think is different depending on the person, right? If, yeah. you, if you're approaching somebody, you know, you kind of gear it towards that person. But I think the biggest thing is I'm just like, Hey man, do you want to, do you want to, you know, uh, mess around with this game? You know what I mean? We get to kill some monsters. We get some, we get some treasure. And then you just laid out as classic as, as it is. It's not like you get to be this. This, you know, this rogue who's really sneaky and, and you know, you get a plus six day. De- you don't need to do all that, right? You they just get care. to tell them. They don't care. Yeah. yeah. Tell them, tell them, you know, we just get to go on it. We're an adventurer. Just take medieval times, sword, magic. We go to kill monsters. We get treasure. We win the girl, you know, whatever kind of thing, right? Yeah. And then you keep yeah. it simple. Like you said, uh, uh, Misfits, you, you keep it really simple um, and you just tell them. I, I've still run games for people because I, I run almost exclusive, not almost, but primarily since I've been in fifth edition, I run games for beginners because one, they're a lot more forgiving. And I've said this before, mm-hmm. De- beginning players or first time players, they're a lot more forgiving if you don't yeah. know the exact rule or if you're like, oh, well, we're going to do it this way. They're not like, well, all raw says, you know what I mean? Yeah. Um, I've which is, it. it's, <laughs> its, its, own, it's its own problems. Um, I and so like, point out yeah, that one shot wonders has a great, op- like a great thought on this. And I really wanted to kind of pin in on this. So it says military guys are always running real life possible scenarios. You could make it about a book or a movie they like, uh, a slow turn, mm-hmm. and kind of change it into like, hey, you know, you watch Game of Thrones, you watch Avengers, you watch Lord of the Rings. I mean, whatever their thing, you watch Mission Impossible. I mean, like, we can go through any sort of movie or any sort of book series mm-hmm. and giving them that opportunity like, hey, have you ever thought about like, what would you do if you were in, in that situation? Oh, I don't yeah. know. Would you like to try to find out? Yeah, A exactly. lot of times people are getting really confused by it. Like, what do you mean? You're like, well, you know, I, there's a game that I play that's very, it, it's very connected. It's, it's very, um, my God, the words I'm trying to remember are just out the window at the moment. Uh, collaborative, that kind of thing. Mm-hmm. And, it's, and it's, it's, it's a lot of, it's a lot of fun. You get, would you ever be interested in trying? And a lot of times they're like, it's kind of weird. I don't know. Or you get the guys who have heard because, you know, now D&D, D&D is popular. mainstream. And they're like, mm-hmm. no, I don't want to play that stupid game. And you're like, I was like, man, you're missing out. And I usually just walk away because I don't I don't play with that anymore. Um, yeah. Yeah. I mean, you have a, to it has to be that person that like, you know, don't force it. And people have to be receptive. If they don't want to play like you're not going to convince people like mm-hmm. if they're like, nah, I don't want to play a stupid game. You know what I mean? Like some people out, like just walk away. Yeah. But for those people that are interested, don't make it overly detailed. 
just like like you said just tell them you're going to go on it do you want to find out like a what if game and then honestly i've run games where i've just been like all right what do you want to be i want to be a fighter i want to be a a magic user i'm like cool right. you get you get one stat it's a plus whatever roll a right. d20 and you just tell me what you want to do just yeah, tell exactly. me describe mm -hmm. what you want i'll describe the scene other RPGs how would you there? react there's a lot mm -hmm. of tabletop role plays out there that are a lot easier to do with that just mm -hmm. hey you know what do you want to do i want to do this cool let's let's do it when you when um, you get their appetite when you when you wet their whistle a little bit you know what, yeah. what was it wet their whistle <laughs> when you um get them hungry for it or whatever you yeah. entice them then yeah. it's like, oh, well, look, now you will look, you want to know what you can do. You can have all these, all these spells, you can have all these, abilities. Yeah. oh, you swung, you know, this kind of whatever, right? It's once you've enticed them, the yeah. hooks in, yeah. then it's mm -hmm. like, well, look, now you get all these. Slowly with anybody bringing into if you can, yeah. unless they have that interest, because you're going to run into both types, right? So you're going to have the one that's going to want to know everything. Like, you know, I went out and I researched six hours on this and I've done this and I've done that. And, you know, but the, we I've love read, those players. I, I bought all three play. I've bought all three books already and I've read them all. And, you know, I watched mm -hmm. 16 hours of videos on YouTube. What do you mm -hmm. want me? What do I need to do next? One of us, one of us. No. <laughs> we so found love, a true believer. I, want I you, love describing. I want yeah, you to I, go home. I want you to take a nap. I want you to stand up the next morning, give me a phone call, and I want you to tell me your race, your class, and what weapon you want to use. And I looked yeah. at the, and the guy looked at me and he was like, "That's it. That's it. You don't need much, man." Oh. We'll figure it out on the roll. Like, let's let's relax a little bit on this. And yeah, yeah. The rule of cool, the man. Other guys who are like very nervous and they're like, "I don't know what to start. I've never rolled a dice in my life, other than you know, craps at the gambling table." And you're like, "Yeah." It's all cool too. Hey, you like to roll craps? You can roll games all day long. I love rolling dice. Um, yeah. And you just kind of find that balance. It, a lot of times, did I miss the bar brawl? You did not miss the bar the tavern brawl. Um, it has not happened yet. I prefer it not tavern happen. brawl. Yeah, yeah. Apparently, apparently, DM Janie is uh, known for his tavern brawls. Oh, watch out! I like I said, I'm a wild stallion out the gate. We've kept him under control for the most part. You did, miss, you did miss some random rants, though, that we've all had. And I think we've all had it because of the fact that uh, this is a very touchy subject for all of us. Yeah. And um, thank you for the uh, the chat there. The Rule of Cool from Head Reaver. Yes, the Rule of Cool is definitely something. Uh, as it's a game one of my master, main rules. You have mm -hmm. to realize, though, that the rule of cool for you and the rule of cool for them is could be completely different. So make sure that they understand that as well. Uh, I tried yeah. not to be that game master, and it's like, no, my way or the highway, go away. But there are moments where you kind of have to step back and uh, reel mm -hmm. people in. Because the other downfall is you have the other others who see this as a epic novel not not the starting adventure an epic novel so they want to start yeah. they want to play batman at level one you can't play yeah. Batman at level one batman at level one is bruce wayne and gotham like it, no bruce wayne is a kid yeah. <laughs> yeah. watching his parents get shot like you vowing a seen, vengeance yes you've ever seen like like bruce wayne right there that's that's instant you know paladin of vengeance and shadow sorcerer kicking in at like half levels, which you can't do anymore. Thank God. So, <laughs> I hated yeah. half levels because it was like you got this stat from this and this stat from this, and it wasn't until you got both levels. I was like, no, half levels are dumb. Don't do it. It'll hurt you. It'll hurt you. <laughs> uh, Bruce Wayne is a kid. Yeah, no, it, it, or as a teenager, even. Like, um, if you take, if you've ever seen the new um, Fox show Gotham, when he starts kind of developing those. Is that Batman new, skills. man? That came out like 10 years ago. Yeah, but it's new. He said that new Batman. show. That new show. <laughs> the newest, the newest version of Batman in that aspect. When you see him as a youngin. And yeah, yeah, yeah. He, that was a decent series. It was a decent series. It was, it was interesting. Better than Smallville. The, yeah. Didn't watch that, so. But I'm not a. So well, that <laughs> was uh, too campy. You like that? Oh, that's me. Well, it was also made like 15 years before Gotham or before. Uh, yeah. Yeah. Was Gotham right? That's well, before the uh, before oh, DC and all the rest of them really broke out. Mm hmm. In, it was like the OG in the Marvel universe. Yeah. So I mean, I enjoyed it. A lot of people do this, and I I have my respect for what you're doing there. I think it's great. 
depends on the players that you're running with. And mm-hmm. the reason I'm going to say that is because um, sometimes level three is too much for a new player. Yeah. You have ever you have you have all new stuff. Um, Wait, the, let me ask you this. Yeah. Would maybe not fifth edition because like I think I remember somebody was like, oh, you should you should introduce people to D and D with four E. Because you have the cards, you have like the, the, the certain things you can do each turn kind of, you know, it was very, it was very like, pop, 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 go, pop, 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 go, pop, pop. You know what I mean? It was like a, a different type of game. And then yeah. it was a lot easier to, to cope, not cope, but like, inter, like you could start a person at level three. And because they have like these cards and it's really simple and it's just like, you know, ABC, 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 ABC. Right. You know, I use and my I one think, attack, I use my one attack. I think it kind of is the same way at those first couple of levels in fifth edition, I don't think they've really broken too far away from that. Okay. Uh, okay. Because you have your, you have your action, you have your bonus action, you have your reaction. That's it. That's true. That's you true. Yeah. going into, cause it's not until fifth level. Do you start getting two actions, that kind of stuff. And you start developing those extra. Mm-hmm. But the problem is, is if you look at, you look at the development of a hero from first, ed- from level one to level three, you go from like a normal hero that doesn't understand anything about a, anything about who he is yet to a character who is getting ready to turn into something completely new. They originally right. had that thing. It's called prestige class. And he was uh-huh. the level five. Oh, I miss prestige so you class. took so much time to learn. That it felt so rewarding when you got it though. Exactly. And yeah. that was one thing I did like about that, which is why I, I missed three. That's what I missed. I 3. love 5. people playing level one characters and people hate me for it until we, until we play a game together and they're like, Oh, so no, 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 I will make the game feel epic in that way at a level one, but I don't want you to be overwhelmed by the amount of stuff that has to go into a level three character mm-hmm. or a level five character. And people who want to do like, I'm a new player, but I want to do something crazy. Let's play at level 10. You're nuts. Plain and simple nuts. Mm-hmm. Because you won't use 90% of your abilities. You won't use 90% of your spells. You won't understand enough. And you'll you'll miss out on the trueness mm. of that character. Uh, good night, buddy. Um, yeah, a lot of them want, want to jump ahead to punching the god in the face, you yeah. know, not yeah. the, the, the running the world user the sword in the face first. Yeah, yeah, very much. Everybody wants to get to that epic ending. They don't want a beginning, you know, like with uh, like Lord of the Rings. You know how that began with Frodo and Sam and them, and then not That's knowing a great anything. Great example. And, yeah. yeah, they just started walking, and then they were at level one, and then then they picked up Aragon, and then they picked up another level as they learned how to fight. And yeah. by the time they made it to Mordor and were taking it on, they were completely different hobbits and characters oh, yeah. than they were when they first started. That is a great analogy for it, I think, if because everybody's familiar with Lord of the Rings. Whether you watch them or not, yep. you're familiar with Lord of the Rings enough to know Frodo went on an adventure – from the Hobbit to Mordor, you know what I mean, and if that's that's a great way to I think if it's on the topic too, which probably on the top of how to get get mom, even you know anybody, but especially military members, um, or you could you could compare it to Frozen because for some fucking goddamn reason I don't know I've been yeah. out for a while. Is Frozen nope. still a thing? No, nope. I thing. remember the barracks. Yeah, the I, barracks. I remember were being, sitting in let the it go. And, oh and my there's god. There's 65 er, there's 65 people sitting in this small room watching Frozen on TV and you've got an entire group of guys singing let it go. Grown ass war fighting fucking yeah. motherfuckers <laughs> singing the whole lyrics, the whole lyrics, not yeah. missing a beat so to the us, let it go. <laughs> now I will admit like because when I was doing that, we most of us were already out of training and that kind of thing. <laughs> um most of us had kids so it was that mm. point where we're yeah. like and, and you watch it on Man, the kids you watch sure. a bunch of people what's that i said blame it on your kids sure oh no i've watched that i've watched that movie really too much what's funny i deal with this yeah it's funny my kids act <laughs> south park the movie yeah no, my kids, <gasps> i don't know how many times i've COVID? watched that one <laughs> I have a three-year-old and a five or a seven-year-old right now, so they're not watching South Park anytime soon. They oh, t- put them on the post-COVID South Park. Yeah, I yeah. Even, I haven't even watched that yet. I'm scared enough to watch. <laughs> it's fucking funny, man. Uh, I know twenty-five. It's, it, it's, it's season sad. Twenty-five's coming out. I oh shit, season twenty-five, man. Yeah, I hope to see. I hope to see Tavern Talks take it that far. 
Avatar season 25, beard. episode 4,365. Yeah. Your beard's like fucking down to your knees. Dude, I wish. I'll be a, I'll be a, uh, I'll be a wizard at that point. Well, you should um, be. So, just multi-class. Here. Right. I tried. Air, airman with have... two, 10 classes, airman, two classes, wizard. There you go. <laughs> I tried once to have a campaign start at level 20, but the setting was Heroes Lost, got de-leveled to level 1, and they had to find the... Nope. I would literally never play. If you start at 20, key, get bust, busted you give the me one. the key to the kingdom, and then drop me back down to 1, oh, I'd be pissed. <laughs> nah. Oh, man. What if it's revenge, though? Like, what if you, like, what if you're like exiled and like you have, what if you have a taste of it? Like you have it one or two encounters. Me, that, that, that reminds me of like, you know, Dark Souls or, you know, Skyrim. Or well, what's of, the um, uh, um, fucking God of War? Yeah. Yeah. So like, yeah. throw me from Tavern Talks D&D 7th edition. Hey, it's a possibility, guys, because I'm just going to keep doing this shit. I don't care. Yeah. Um, as long as we have guests who want to come on and talk with me, I will do this for the obscenable future. Uh, so just some, just some takeaways for this tonight, guys. Um, if you're bringing in new players, especially military members, make sure that it is easy. It is somewhat able to be connected with, with a military member. So kind of bring the scenarios back home a little bit and, uh, inform them that it's kind of, so one thing I love doing is I inform them that they're getting out of their own head for a little bit. Uh, because that's what I always told my players when I was downrange or when we were overseas is my goal is to make it so you forget that you're in a shitty sandbox. That is my goal. Mm. And if I can do that, then I've, 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 I've done my job for the day. And, uh, um, and last but not least, invite your military friends. They might give you a little bit of heck at first. Um, if you have to invite them with food, it will work. I promise you yep. that food will drive any food and beer. member to head off. <laughs> and if they don't drink, food is always the plus. Yep. Uh, if they do drink, alcohol helps. Uh, but and it's funny we say that because we're playing in a tavern right now, and you know, ninety percent of games start in a tavern if unless you you get creative. And, mm-hmm. um, and if you say tavern to any marine, you've already got them. Yeah, you're pretty much. Mm-hmm. We were born in Tavern. We were literally birthed on the bar and had our first beer right there. Hoorah, Semper Fi. I hope this was a good talk, guys. I hope you guys mm-hmm. enjoyed it in the stream. I hope uh, Janie and Colton, you guys have enjoyed it. Um, I had a good time. I mean, yeah. I would say one last way that I would introduce people to D&D. Here he goes. We'll let him do it. One great way, and I'm going to bring it up because Tabletop Misfits, we, we just figured out that you were going to take the last slot in, oh, in the shout out section, right? Yep. Um, so seeing as how we're going to make that happen from my boy, my main man, Tabletop Misfits. So check it out. If you want to introduce somebody into D&D, next month would be a great time to do it because starting next month, we're going to be releasing the very first Dungeon Monthly magazine. Roll for inspiration. This is going to be a D&D magazine with a Valentine's Day themed, hmm. com- completely created by community content. So there's no published arcana. It's all homebrewed community content. I'm going to tell you what. We got 16 pages in this magazine, an eight-page booklet insert on how to build a better barred balcony by pronoun Jim. And I'm a, this is a big plus that I'm most excited about. We're going to have 12 full-size D&D-themed Valentine's Day cards printed on cardstock for the printed editions. Now, check this out. This is a perfect resource to introduce players into D&D because it fits a theme for the month, and it's all about the community. So if you guys know somebody that is in the community, and this is where Tabletop Misfits, uh, I haven't, this is the test print. The Tabletop Misfits, you're going to be right underneath here. This is going to be your spot for your shout out. Yep. And like, that's, that's, I mean, how cool is that? You, somebody, you know, might be in this magazine, you know what I'm saying? And what better way to be connected than to the people with the people you're already playing with. Oh, that's so cool. support, yeah, page <laughs> it was supposed to be, it was supposed to be one page. It turned into 27. 
And you, so you can't say anything about that because the book we just wrote was uh, supposed to be 15 pages and it's turned into 60. So it's yeah. like, man, it happens. It's yeah. hard because you want to share so much, but check it out. This is going to be a completely free resource to, to access online. I'm on, and I'm going to be mailing this out, but it's only going to cost to how much it costs me to print and mail. I'm not making any money on this, even though I've put over 300 hours into making this a reality for players. Okay. I That's highly awesome. recommend you check it out. It's got all kinds of community community shout outs. It's a great way to introduce new players because it has a theme that is already relevant to what you're gonna be celebrating in February. So sign up for the Dungeon Monthly newsletter. You can find it on my link tree on Instagram. Look at that guys. We didn't expect to have another another amazing opportunity to give uh, another creator that, off, that spotlight we did. Um, and as a final note, before we sign off and have our last call, I'm going to show off one thing that if you've stayed here until the end, you get to see. You're the first people to ever see this. Starting in February, we have been sponsored for the entire month of February by the guys over at C4 Labs. And we have gotten our promo stuff in tonight. I received them. I'm super excited to show you guys. So Drum roll, we, drum roll. As the Misfits have our very own <laughs> Dice Trails. Guys, look at that thing. It is so shiny. That's so crazy. It hasn't even taken out of the box yet. It'll be revealed more so uh, this week. We have the Misfits logo hype, dice trays. Hype, 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 and hype, then hype, hype, for you crazy hype. people who have been following the show, we have the entire team, including oh! myself at the top there, the Game Master. Look at you, boy! Yeah. Uh, that are also on there. So Those look great. Oh, that's so freaking of, cool! The entire month of March or entire month of February, we're sponsoring C4 Labs, and we're going to be shouting out them at every single show. And what this is going to do is, is you can go over to their website, you can get one of their three different models. So this is the smallest model, but they grow up to like a full blown, like massive dungeon uh, tray, uh, where you can put your own custom logo in there. And if you want to help us out, let them know that the custom logo you want in there is the misfits and if we can get a bunch of those they're looking at sponsoring us for further and further projects which i'm super excited about i'm gonna i'm gonna like so. make it a gang sign hold on c4 c4 c4, c4? what's up so if you guys go over there and we'll have uh we're doing an entire giveaway that month so make sure you keep on all of our uh our social medias out there and you will be able to uh all you'll need to do of course is like us on social media and then like c4 labs and you guys can have your own custom uh, dice trays, and uh, yeah, we are we are super psyched to uh, be working with these guys because they. You know whose logo would look great on one of those dice trays? Yeah, I know. Your favorite dungeon master. Yeah. See, you can do that yourself. Just let them know that you that the misfits sent you. I'm about to I'm about to hop on and be like, Yo, C4, C4, where's up? My, where's my discount at? <laughs> But yeah, no, they uh, and they also make if you are the the epic uh, dice tray connoisseur, they make something called the Mayor. It is a massive googling it right now wooden like fully made like oh it's so beautiful. I've I saw it at Gen Con. I was blown away by it. Uh, we've had a couple other friends of ours get it, and this thing is. This thing holds four sets of dice around the whole thing. Oh, and man. It is made out of uh, three exotic woods, uh, maple and walnut, maple and ebony, and, or Brazilian cherry and ebony. And it's hmm. 11 inches. It's beautiful. It's 11 inches round. So this thing is... It looks like it belongs in like a, a really fancy casino. Right? You know That's what I'm what saying? I said, too, when I saw it. And I believe they did a... Uh... Yeah, so they put actual leather in the bottom of it oh, it's, so, nice. it's so nice so if you guys want to support the stream want to support our guys over there at c4 labs go let them know that the misfits sent you um if you want to buy a, a a mayor i'm sure they will sell one of those to you but for the month of february we are pushing the custom uh dice tray print your own image and they, as long as you have an SVG file, you can send them that, and they're going to throw that over, put that on an image, and uh, you can have your favorite dungeon master stream. Or if you have a professional, you know, professional grade picture of a puppy that you 
you, your own your pets or stuff like that or your loved ones you can throw those up there too and it looks like we lost our favorite dungeon master dm janey uh-oh it's just it's we're getting bounces getting a little little no nope, my camera died Hold oh on. no because uh, so uh, i don't i'm i'm wi-fi yeah oh you're good so with that we're going to call it for the evening so thank you again for everybody that came tonight thank you to our guest the bipolar dm and dm janey and hey! until then raise your glasses and no call has been said and we'll see you guys all next week for episode 33 and please, if you have the time and energy and want to come out and hang out with us this Sunday, uh, we'll continue our next episode for uh, the Affordables, my live D&D 5e campaign, Ran in the World of Zioth A. So until then, be safe, make sure your mental health is taken care of, and we will see you next time. And sign up for the DMM. <laughs> <laughs> Thank <laughs> you.